Okay, so let's look at Alaska. Um, as I said in a previous podcast, if you can, if you're able to, do have the poem out in front of you and do have a pencil in your hand. It's probably a good idea as I'm talking about the poem just to be making notes, um, just so to aid your, your revision. So let's, um, I'm not going to read the whole poem, I'm just going to read the first um, the first couple of two or three lines. Think about, because I want you to think about the tone of voice that I use when I read it. So you upped and went, big deal, now you must be sitting pretty. Now you must see me like a big Kodiak bear, safe and hold up for the close season then rumbled. You must see me like the crown prince rattling around his icy palace. We notice straight away the tone of voice is really important here. Unlike about his person, which really doesn't have a tone of voice because it's a list, this is a narrator, a person, talking to someone. You upped and went. Big deal. So who is it? Well, it sounds to me like someone who's left him. This is a man whose partner, whose wife, whose girlfriend, whoever he was living with, has left him, probably for another man, but we don't know that initially. In fact, by the end of the poem, we get a sense that yes, it is another man. So the tone of voice is important in this poem because it's the tone of a man who's quite bitter, but who seems to be masking this bitterness by trying to justify um, something of his own sense of infallibility that actually he's not that bothered really. Big deal, so you left me, I don't really care. What I'm going to do in the next uh, the, the next part of this podcast is just look at the first few um, ideas, and then in the in the in the next podcast I'll look at the second half of the poem. You must be sitting pretty. Sitting pretty is is a um, a kind of colloquial term, a term of speech, a figure of speech, for someone who must be having a good life now. You must be sitting pretty. You must have it all right now. You must see me like a big Kodiak bear, a big Canadian bear safe and hold up for the close season. The close season is the time um, when hunting doesn't occur, so the time when a, a bear would go into hibernation, then rumbled. Why rumbled? Well, it, this is a tough one. Often in Simon Armitage's poetry, we're, we're left thinking, well, what do you mean by that? Rumbled by what? Well, rumbled is a term that refers to um, someone who's been found out. So has the, the bear been disturbed in some way? And then he goes on to talk about the girl seeing her, that, that she must see him like a crown prince rattling round his icy palace. It's often useful in Armitage's poetry to pick up on key words. The word rattling there suggests that he's kind of rumbling around in this big place on his own. Is he a prince really? Does he really have a palace? Well, we don't know. Maybe he's just an ordinary man whose partner has left him, um, but maybe sees his life as actually being okay. He's got this big palace. Uh, this big house, he's rattling around, but he's all right. The cook and bottle washer gone, snuck off a moonlight flit to the next estate. Again, that suggests that this girl, woman, has left him, maybe for a better deal. Sick pay wages, running water. That sh that maybe the life she was living with this man was rather frugal, rather um, too basic, and that she, le she left him for a better life. So you can see that first section of the poem up to that type of concession is all to do with how she must see him. But of course, this is his point of view, not hers. What we're getting is a man who's trying to think about how she must be seeing him. That she must see him like this big old bear, safe, rattling around this big house, but ultimately OK. What we'll do in the next podcast is I'll just talk about the second half of the poem um, because then that kind of gives us a little bit more indication as to what really the poem is about. As in many of Armitage's poems, we only really understand the poem once we've read the ending, and we can reflect back on the whole poem based on the ending of it. But if we just think about the first half being about how she, he must perceive that she sees him, and the tone of voice, we can tell that in many ways he probably is deluding himself. He's fooling himself to think that she actually thinks in the way that she does. Mm -hmm.